Well, that's a bit of crap, yeah, and right? And as you can see here. Clearly, that must be the algorithm. Then. <laughs> What's that? The secret of Patrick? <laughs> oh no 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 no! no. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of SEO Fairy Tales. With me today is Jamie Indigo. Hello. Hello, my darling friend. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful day. It's a pleasure to be here in this magical land of fairy tales and yes, code. the fairy kingdom. You yourself are the wicked witch of JavaScript, aren't you not? I do try. Yes, me and my <laughs> flying monkeys are here to debug and bring terror to all of the world. <laughs> Terror. Okay, that sounds like you have a few stories about JavaScript, and you want to probably it's share one with terror. us. It's useful terror. It's useful, useful terror. terror. The yeah. good kind of terror. All right, <laughs> that, whatever floats your boat or flies your monkeys, I guess. Um, <laughs> Whatever I, flies your monkeys, it should be. It should be a standard phrase, right? Yeah, we need to we need to trademark that right now. There's apparently <laughs> this Polish phrase uh, of "not my circus, not my monkeys." If you're mm. like not not my business, I love that one. But flying monkeys make that even better if you think about it. Like, not my circus, not my flying monkeys. Mm. Mm. Anyway, let's talk about JavaScript. So you do have a story for me uh, about JavaScript and yes. SEO. Right. I mean, once upon a time, there was an automotive site that had these product listing pages. And each product listing page, of course, contains products because that's what it's designed to do. <laughs> it should contain products, yeah. Ideally. Yeah. That, would, that would be ideal for a product page. <laughs> but here's where the problem comes in. They weren't. So my team comes to us and is like, hey, we have all of these product listing pages and we're hemorrhaging them out. We've lost three million of our product listing landing pages from Google's index. Three million. Yeah, 36% in a three month period. They were falling like a house under Oz. Oh. Munchkins be warned, troubles afoot. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, that's, wow, okay. What did you do when you got that inquiry? Take a deep breath, obviously. Okay, yeah, take, a, take a take a big deep breath because that's a big big drop. Mm -hmm. So they they share over the data set they're looking at. We see something is clearly afoot. The data is mm -hmm. there showing it's wrong. Take it over. Start looking. All right. If they went from valid, they went somewhere. Where mm -hmm. did they go? And we follow this yellow brick road, and we end up in software of warts. All of these pages. Oh, no. Yeah. OK. Yeah. They have suddenly been transported. They are surrounded by flying monkeys and no man's land of excluded from index. And there's a bunch of them. Uh, so I've first heard step. so many software for stories. So what was, what was the next step then? Because a bunch of things can lead to that. Many roads lead to the soft 404 Oz. You are correct. And not all of them are yellow. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so we manually test. There's, of course, those beautiful sample URLs mm -hmm. in there. We start opening them up in browser, and they're all there. All of them have content. Mm. Ooh, right? Like, soft hmm. 404 has happened. JavaScript yeah. frameworks, especially yeah. when you've got a large site, it's got a product inventory management system, it's making dynamic queries for every call. Yep. Soft 404 has happened. But these were these were not. These were real pages with so useful they content. They were not fine. I've seen soft 404s on product detail pages beforehand. Mike actually told us a story about it. And it turned out to be not be a rendering issue, but like a crawling problem where mm -hmm. crawling from a certain location was actually leading to empty product pages because there was no inventory. But you say the th stuff was there. We weren't requiring permissions like geolocation yeah. to render the content. So it's not that. No, it wasn't that. It was, mm. you know, look through all of the typical causes, all the usual mischief, but this was a different beastie. Uh, so yeah. what did you do next? How did you dig deeper? Well, obviously, use that that live URS, URL testing tool. Mm -hmm. We couldn't look at the cache version because they're excluded from cache. So we do Oops. the live tests, and ah, there we go. There's something afoot. If we look into the uh, more info page yeah. resources, and there we're seeing, look at this particular script. This thing is blocked by a robust TXT. No. 
Oh, a good stranger, my friend. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. So we talk to the devs and they tell us, yes, this particular script helps to determine the inventory in that area. It's part of that dynamic query for the PIM mm-hmm. to bring back the content needed on that page. Mm-hmm. And it's been blocked. So we're like, ha clearly this is this is the problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so let's it's... remove that disallow. Let's get this sorted out real quick. Remove this allow. It's still showing it's just allowed. What's happening here? Oh, no. It's a side quest. It is a side quest because we <laughs> use the robots.txt testing tool and yes. it gives it a great little timestamp and says, yes. this is what your robots.txt looked like at this time, date and time. And what we find is we made the change. We pushed it to the robots.txt, yes. but it has a tendency to exist. Uh, Turns out that robots.txt is hosted in a bunch of different CDNs, yeah? No. <laughs> they weren't all updating. So. The rabbit hole goes deeper? The rabbit hole goes even oh, deeper. No. So we get them all on the same page. Mm-hmm. We get those those rabbits hopping in unison mm-hmm. down our yellow big road, and we think we've got it now. This resource is no longer blocked. We'll be able to go ahead and yes. generate this full, beautiful page, and it didn't work. Be- because the robot sticks to didn't somehow update, or? <laughs> no, the- it did update. It did um... update. The plot thickens, my friend. The plot thickens like, indeed. So what was, yeah, what was that then? Like, how did you move on from that? I mean, you figured out the first problem, you figured out the second problem. We go and we test it again live. And it's no longer showing as blocked. Yay! Yeah. But the page still says, we're sorry. Something went wrong with this page. And that's not what I can see in the browser. So we go back to the devs and we say, Whoa. clearly, this is a fallback behavior. How is it generated? And the devs go, well, if there's an error when it's making the page and it's you know JavaScript framework, Fair enough, a whole yeah. bunch of Ajax calls mm-hmm, involved in there, mm-hmm. all these little if JSON endpoints hiding around. Fails, it gives you that response. Exactly. So now we have a much more fun mission. Now we have to break it. We have to break <sighs> it in the browser so we can replicate yeah, and course. figure out yeah. how it's breaking for oh, Google. Oh, God, no. All right. So it's a listing page. We pull this beautiful beast open. And of course, there's 29 of these endpoints. Of so, course, because <laughs> why wouldn't there? Because of course, because of reasons. So we go through and we start just systematically breaking them. And we do this in Chrome Dev Tools. Mm, you can block individual yeah. requests, yeah. Yes, we go into that network tab, we find the request, we block it, we reload the page, we see, does it work? And, and soon enough, we find out that of these 29 endpoints, almost all of them, if you break one, cause the entire page to rewrite. So each, each result in this product yeah. listing page had an endpoint. Yeah. If any one of them failed, the entire the page entire fails page. if one result fails. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I have so many questions. Okay, yeah, right, okay, okay. Why? But also, how <laughs> did you overcome this then? I mean, the why was their good intentions, but mm. not understanding the ramifications. Mm. and. Google likes to make many a call. Sometimes <laughs> they're building things of assorted pieces and things fail. Fail, yeah. So we went back and we showed them, here's the behavior patterns. Mm. Ones that match this syntax. If they are to fail, that means we don't have content anymore. Yeah. How do we gracefully handle these kind of errors? Instead of letting the entire page fail, is there a way to acknowledge, oops, one went sideways and, you know, mm-hmm. not throw the witch out with the bathwater? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, just not show that one result that failed and just like carry on with the 29 others that you have. If it's like 30 on the page, it like, uh, shouldn't be too hard. It wasn't. It really was just chatting with the engineers and <gasps> oh. going, can we change the behavior from mm-hmm. one and done to <laughs> gracefully going, oops, are bad and carrying on so we mm-hmm. can still provide that useful content. The team was able to look at the reproduction steps that we provided. Yeah. We clearly laid them out, nice. see exactly what was impacted and change that behavior. <sighs> To measure our nice. success, we went ahead and looked at our index coverage. We manually resubmitted 
Exactly. Up and to the right. Uh, Manually nice. resubmitted some, watched their hate behavior specifically. Then we watched the larger number of valid and submitted. And as that went back up, the money went back up. Happy everybody. Happy That's everyone. That's there was That's just lovely. a full Ruby Heels clicking party. <laughs> <laughs> What a beautiful story to tell. So regarding tooling, so you started off in Search Console, um, saw that there's a problem there, and then went into well, more Search Console, basically, in the URL inspection tool and, and testing things in the, in the live test, as well as in looking at what was not crawled. You used the robots.txt tester as well. Yes. Uh, because I love that it's versioning. Great, it tells it? me when it changed. There's it's dates great. on it. It's really, really useful. Um, and then, uh, last but not least, you use the Chrome Developer Tools, right? The Network yes. Inspector. Oh my God, that's, that's wonderful. That's a really nice tool set. And what a rabbit hole that has been. It was a glorious rabbit hole. <laughs> I made so many friends along the right way. There I were straw imagine. men and lions and tin men. <laughs> Did you find a heart for the tin man? I mean, I found a charger for my, my laptop. Does that count? I think so, yeah. I think that, that counts. Yeah, that, that's that's legitimate. Yeah, I mean, works, right? As long as it works, it's fine. As long as it works. Oh. Up and to the right, just like the indexing Up and to stats. the right. And then, of course, we saw that saw 404 down to the right. That's what that's you want to exactly see. Exactly, we wanted. That's what you want to see. So cool. Such an interesting, successful story. And just with a handful of tools, and basically, by looking at it systematically, you just went through the entire problems one after the other and actually fixed them. Step by step with step the data that we had, and we could confirm isolating the variables, changing them out, finding, oh, that wasn't it, but it was something else. Mm, uh. Fantastic. That's really, really nice. Thanks a lot for, for being here and uh, telling us the little fairy tale. Or spooky JavaScript story. I think more Spooky fairy tale. JS to tell in the dark. S spooky JS. <laughs> we need to make a Halloween episode out of this event. I am, like that. I am here that for we should, it. We should yes. do that. But again, Jamie, thank you so much for being here and telling thank us you. the story. And uh, for all of you who watched, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and had as much fun as we had. And uh, leave us a like and a subscribe, and maybe write in the comments what kind of interesting JavaScript stories you experienced yourself. And uh, stay tuned and uh, take care. Bye bye. Bye. And the yes. SEOs wished that JavaScript would leave the land for all time and never return to haunt their mortal dreams. It did not. It stayed and ate them all. The end. Okay. <laughs>